Sick Hillbilly Gospel. With Latin roots, obviously. <laughs> Question. How many of you today are just a little bit contagious? It's a trick question. How many of you think that what you say and do has impact on anyone else in the world? Therefore, you are contagious. It isn't just about that sneeze into the hand. It isn't just about sharing those flu bugs or whatever bugs are out and about. It's about being contagious for God. We're starting this whole new series today based on the idea that God's love is worth sharing. How many of you agree with that? God's love is worth sharing. So if God's love is worth sharing, how many of us are responsible for sharing it? Oh, good. We're in pretty good agreement here. I'm liking this sermon better and better by the minute. Well, the truth is, we're all contagious. We know that. And lots of different parts of us are contagious, right? How many of you have ever been con con convicted of or accused of, doesn't really matter, of having an attitude? <laughs> and you're never accused of having a good attitude, are you? Not too often. Because it usually comes across this way. Young man or young woman, and it's almost always an adult talking to their child, usually. You better change that attitude of yours. And the only reason they want you to change it is because it's not the attitude they want you to have. It doesn't really matter if it's good or bad. It's just not the attitude they want you to have. But attitudes are contagious. If you're hanging around with people who are upbeat and happy and excited about life, how do you respond? You get happy. You get excited. It's more fun. And then the opposite is also true. If you hang out with people who are downers, who are complainers or whiners, or you can fill in the blank, the odds are good you're going to become just like them. Here's what we know. Who you hang out with is really important. We used, used to always tell our children that, but we didn't really understand it, I don't think. But the fact of the matter is, adults of every age and children of every age become just like the five people they're closest to. So look at your five friends. If they're upbeat, fun, and exciting, the odds are good that you're upbeat, fun, and exciting. If you hang out with people who aren't, you might want to change groups because you're probably not having any fun. I love uh, the Snoopy uh, cartoon, and, and one of the things that I learned from Snoopy was that we all had influence on people, and sometimes people expect us to influence them more. From Snoopy, we read this. Um, Peppermint Patty is talking to Charlie Brown, and she says, Guess what, Chuck? It's the first day of school, and I got sent to the principal's office already. And it's your fault, Chuck. <laughs> and Charlie Brown looks at Peppermint Patty saying, My fault? How could it be my fault? Why do you say everything is my fault? To which Peppermint Patty looks at Chuck and says, You're my friend, aren't you, Chuck? You should have been a better influence on me. Now, I'm 
going to tell you that um, attitudes really are contagious, but it's not just attitudes that are contagious. Our very lives are contagious. That's what Peppermint Patty was saying. If you know John, he's going to affect your life. If you know Lori, she's going to affect your life. If you know Johnny, and the more you hang out with people who are good influencers, the better life's going to be. So choose who you hang out with carefully. It isn't just our lives, though. It's not just our attitudes that are contagious, but also it is our faith that is contagious. Good and bad, we're always a witness. See, I think we forget that, even though I say it about once a quarter. Our faith is contagious. And that means that the way we live our faith is a witness. And there's only two ways to be a witness. You can be a witness for, or you can be a witness against. So if you're a witness for Jesus, praise God. But if you're a witness against Jesus, you better watch out. Now, we don't like to hear the preacher say things like that, do we? Because after all, we love people. We want to love one another and just love them into the kingdom of God. But I'm kind of here today to tell us that our faith is always contagious. So we need to be careful about what kind of germs we're spreading. Why is that? Well, I think the story of Zacchaeus tells it to us best. We love this story. We sang the song. Zacchaeus was a wee little man, and a wee little man was he. He climbed up in that sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. And then we know what happened. Jesus comes along and says, come down out of that tree. I'm coming to your house for dinner. Ta-da! It's okay. They know it. Besides, I want you to sing it the rest of the day. You see, in this story of Zacchaeus, we find out a real truth that is so important for us that it's summed up in one simple phrase. And that phrase is... Because people matter. So repeat after me. Because, because people, people matter. matter. Turn to a neighbor and say, because people matter. matter. Alright. Now, here's why this is important. We find out when we read scripture that the sick matter. Yes, they do. The poor matter. Yes, they do. The rich matter. Yes, they do. To make you all feel better, the middle class matter. Yes, they do. See, you all identified with that one. Democrats matter. Yes, they do. Republicans? Yes, they do. Libertarians and independents? Yes, they do. I'm glad you all agreed with that. People who are gay matter. Yes, they do. People who are women matter. Yes, they do. Men? Children, yes, they do. black people, white people, Hispanic people, Asian people, all matter. My Filipino friends matter. 
my Arab friends matter, my new Latvian friends, you can ask Sheila about that, matter. Jesus says, go into all the world, make disciples, baptize them, love them, teach them. Why? Because they matter. Yesterday, we celebrated Vesta Jensen's life. We had a full house. It was a great day. It was one of the most fun funerals I've ever been to. It was one of those days that I think the church needs to live up to. Now, why is it that yesterday was such a powerful, moving ceremony, service? We passed the microphone, kind of like our joys and concerns section, but... but People wanted to tell stories and wanted to share their lives and wanted to maybe be encouraging to others. And time and time again, we heard that Vesta was so precious to each and every one of us. Because she understood that people mattered. It's true, isn't it? It didn't matter where you met her and how, what kind of relationship with you. You knew that if you were talking with Vesta, you mattered. She might not have agreed with you. She might have been unhappy with you. But you mattered. You might have been celebrating her son or her daughter or granddaughter. You mattered. I had a favorite comment show up four different times in the course of about two hours yesterday. It's kind of my favorite Vesta phrase. And she never said it. When I grow up, I want to be Vesta or like Vesta. Well, I can tell you how to do that. Live like people matter. You see, everywhere that Jesus went, everywhere that Jesus went, he discovered and we discovered people that matter. He loved each one. He cared about them. He shared the good news that was him with each one. And so today, we hear that we are called to be contagious. To be contagious in our faith. To infect the world around us with God's love and God's hope and God's peace. Why? Because people matter. Amen. O oh, Master, let me walk with thee as I...